Good morning, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. I hope you are all doing well and that the Lord is providing for all of your needs. Uh, bless you and praise you um, for all of you. Praise the Lord for all of you, Church of the Living God. We praise the Lord for all of you. Thank you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Praise the name of the Lord. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in the scriptures to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Um, today I'm going to be addressing, Lord willing, some questions that were brought up to me. And um, this is the beginning of it. It's just about 8 o'clock here, my time in glorious Woodchuck, Illinois. Um, so like I said, I'm going to be answering a few questions today, Lord willing. But for this video, I'm going to be looking at several verses about the scriptures. Okay? Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 2. You are expected to follow me along. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the, the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Okay? Go now to the book of Psalms. To the book of Psalms. Starting at Psalm 12. Psalm 12. These are familiar verses, but you will see the point in this. Psalm 12, verses 6 and 7. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver is tried, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now again, the scriptures went through a seven part purification process to arrive at the final purification, the English. Okay? I've already addressed that in us uh, other videos. But the words of the Lord are pure words. His words are pure. Thou shalt preserve them. You read anything that is not the authorized version of the scriptures, some of them will mess this up and say, Thou shalt preserve us, not them. What is the them referring to? The words. Okay? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And notice here in uh, verse 6, as tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. As silver is tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Okay? This, dear friends, is a promise from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that he is going to preserve his words. And where are they preserved? They are preserved in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. The authorized version is based off of texts that are traced back onto Antioch, where they called us Christians First, we did not refer to ourselves as Christians. When Peter says that, it's kind of said in the in a tongue-in-cheek way. Okay? Kind of. Kind of. Most definitely. 
Okay, but the manuscripts that underlie the authorized version of the scriptures are traceable onto Antioch, Syria, while the manuscripts that are for the fake scriptures, or excuse me, for the fake Bibles, they're not the scriptures, are traceable onto Alexandria, Egypt. Okay, and the custodians of those manuscripts are Rome the Vatican. Okay? So if you have the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, you in fact do have God's pure word. Okay? If you have anything else, it is just a Bible. It is not God's pure words. Go now to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. <clears throat> Psalm 119. Beth. Psalm 119. Beth. That is verses 9 under verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. <laughs> thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Okay? Now, now, in Psalm 119, go to Lamed. Lamed. What is that? Verses 89 on to verse 96. Lamed. Okay? Or Lamad. Or Lamed, however it's pronounced. Lamed. In Psalm 119, verses 89 on to verse 96. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Now, hold on. These Jesuit, yea, hath God said, textual critics will come to this and say, well, God's perfect word is in heaven. We don't have it here today. Boop. Yea, hath God said? Anyone coming around telling you that we do not have God's perfect, pure, given by inspiration word today, they are a liar. They are a liar and feeding off the lies given to them by the Jesuits. Yea, hath God said, Satan, you know, first thing he did in his scripture, when it is accounted in the book of Genesis, what did he do? Yea, hath God said, question God's words. Jesuit trained textual critics will say, see, his word is forever in heaven. We don't have it down here. We have copies. We have things that are close, but they ain't perfect. They're lying to you and want you to doubt what God hath indeed said. Don't you forget that. <clears throat> forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is on to all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should have perished in mine affliction. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Where do you get God's precepts, especially today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, the Pauline epistles, Boop. the scriptures? 
I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, <laughs> but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Now we will read Mem. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments have made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way. That I may keep thy word. Tell me, are you fashioning your life in accordance to the scriptures, that doctrine that is specifically found within the Pauline epistles? If you don't have God's word, the authorized version of the scriptures, you have a counterfeit, you have a Bible, which removes the word of God from the Pauline epistles. You need the scriptures, dear friend. <clears throat> I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way such as these false Bibles out there, such as Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, and anything else that is associated unto the mother of harlots. Now let us read none. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Quicken, strengthening. Except I, bese I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. How's your speech, by the way? Hmm? Is your speech line up in accordance with the scripture? Hmm? Are corrupt communications coming out of your mouth? <clears throat> Verse 109. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. Right there is a dispensational difference, okay? Because body and soul were connected during this dispensation under the law. Today, we have the circumcision of Christ, the circumcision made without hands, okay? That's why things we touch or things we ingest today during this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, uh, it does not affect our soul like it did in the Old Testament, okay? I have several videos talking about that, so we won't get into it, but let's continue. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. And while we're at it now, let's read... Zadai, Zadai, that's verses 137 to verse 144, dear friend, okay? 
Zadai in Psalm 119. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me, because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I love this book, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, because through this, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, speaks unto me personally. How about you? How about you? Let's continue. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Get a hello to that verse. The righteousness of thy testimonies. His testimonies. Where are his testimonies? Contained within the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. Thy righteousness, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I will live. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. You ought to have that one committed to your memory, dear friend. Okay? Let's now go to Kof. Kof, which is verses 145 on to 152. I cried with my heart, Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. I cried unto thee, Save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning. I cried and hoped in thy word. Mine eyes prevent the night watches, that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness. O Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. Yes, God is a God of judgment. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Talking about infiltrators. <laughs> thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. Concerning thy testimonies, I have known I have known of old, I have known of old that thou hast founded them for ever. And finally, in Psalm 119, Tau, T A U. Verses 169 on to verse 176. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. Hmm. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. <clears throat> Continue. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Proverbs 
chapter 30. Our Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. Come on, fingers, work with me. Verses 5 and 6 in Proverbs chapter 30. Verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Okay? Go now to John. John 17. These, like I have said, these are familiar verses. These ought to be familiar verses unto you. Okay? These ought to be. These had ought to be. We are going through these for a specific purpose. John 17. Verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Yep. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh, imagine that. Hmm? Go to Romans. Go to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10. Verse 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? And Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the capitalist scriptures might have hope. Is it capitalized in the scriptures you are reading? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Thank you, Pardon, brethren. Ephesians chapter 6. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's read on from verse 13. On to verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 on to verse 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Shield of faith. You do have to let down the shield to survey the battlefield. But you got to be careful, because when you let that shield down, the fiery darts of the wicked. A better translation is this. Which one is it? Right? We're going to get on that here in a little bit. Okay? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, capital S, which is the Word of God. And finally, oh no, not finally, go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. <clears throat> 2 
2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses, oh, ah, I was looking at three, excuse me. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational otherwise. Okay? And Second Timothy chapter 3. Verses 15 on to verse 16. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? After it has went through the seven purification process, the seventh being English. Okay? Okay? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And finally, Revelation. Revelation, which we, which I will be addressing this in a, a later video here today. <clears throat> Revelation, verses 16, on to verse 21. Oh, verse, uh, Revelation chapter 22. I beg your pardon. Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 on to verse 21. Revelation chapter 22. I beg your pardon, brethren. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the, the plagues that are written in this book. Now, people like to say, well, this is just only talking about the book of Revelation. Catholics say that a lot. So do the Jesuit-trained textual critics, Jesuits themselves. Yea, hath God said. Okay? Regardless of that, we have been looking at how important the scriptures are unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? We haven't covered all of them. Okay? We haven't. But this is just basic. Thou hast exalted thy word above thine own name. You go find that one on your own time. Okay? We're getting the point, aren't we? Yes. Let's continue. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, of course, we were reading from God's pure, perfect, given by inspiration word, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. Which one, though, right? This is a facsimile copy 
of the 1611 authorized version of the scriptures, which I read out of this morning. This is the 1779 authorized version of the scriptures. Now, between 1611 and 1779, okay, there was one in between 1611 and 1779, okay? There was. And these textual critics, Jesuit trained textual critics, yea, hath God said, will often say, well, the King James Bible has been changed, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah, really? Okay. What has been changed or what things were changed were spelling, capitalizations, okay? Sometime, and I personally believe that every one of the Church of the Living God ought to have themselves a copy of the 1611. This is God's Word, the 1611. But when you read within the 1611, you're going to notice some very big differences within the English found within the 1779, okay? For example, you'll find within the scriptures, some places with ye with two e's, commandments with a u added within there, an additional e on certain places. And also uh, within the 1611, you will find incidences where there is the, a y in the place of where the word the would be sometimes, okay? Those are the things that were updated, if you will, were changed, all right? Things such as that nature. Capitalization, which is found within the 1779, which was not found primarily to start with in the 1611, Okay, because when you read from the 1611, you will, like I said, and you can, you can take this, you can take this and this, lay them side by side. They're going to read the same. Okay, yes, there are incidences, like I said, you will see a little Y in the place of where you would read he here in the 1779, where the word the would be. Okay? You will see that. You will see parts within the 1611 were of uh, incidences of spirits that are clearly making reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, which are capitalized within the 1779, yet not within the 1611. Okay? There are things we must Keep in mind, dear brethren, that when the 1611 was first put out, okay, and if any of you can locate this video where it showed the process, the printing process, which the which they used for the 1611, please put it in the description box and I will link it, okay? They had the little block thing there, and they had to put the letters in there individually backwards, Okay, then they put the sheet on there and then they go <laughs> like that. Okay, but every single word, every single sentence, paragraph, all the structure had to be individually placed in these molds or whatever they were backwards. Okay, and also our English language was not as refined back here as it is today. Okay. Certain uh, things of grammar were yet to be established, especially within the written form. Okay? Those are things you have to remember. Okay? Those are things you have to remember. A dear, dear beloved brother, who I, I sent this, uh, a copy of the 1611, I had openly asked the question, it's like, well, the, some of the capitalizations are not right as they are in the 1779, okay? Um, and there are words missing. The, where there is a ye, or where, where there is a y. Or sometimes there are places where the word the 
and little words like that that connect sentence structure together are sometimes not found within the authorized version of the scriptures of 1611. Okay? We have to remember that. Does that mean this is inaccurate? That this is not God's word? Hmm? Which one is it? Hmm. Hmm. Brethren, sisters, every video henceforth, if I if the Lord would guide me to use this primarily for doing this, it would be from God's word. Okay? All right? Now, granted, the 1611 is not uh, readily within circulation. You can get this from Hendrickson. Okay? This is God's word. This is God's word. Okay? This is purified. Okay, this is God's word, pure. But anyone who has gleaned through this, you will know the totally different spelling. Okay, and also, like I mentioned, how there are certain uh, parts within this, the scriptures, where the little Y is there, where when you will compare it with this, is the word the and such of that nature. Spelling changes, name changes, you know, like because the names, certain names are spelled totally strange to our modern eyes when they are spelled uh, how we would spell them today. You know what I mean? There are no errors within the doctrines that you will find within the 1611. There are not. Okay? You can, like I said, take these side by side. They will read the same. Now, this one is specifically in the Roman font. But you got to also remember that the 1611 was first in Gothic font with the S being a little F. Use V's, V's, U's, little I's for J's, and so on and so forth. And you will see somewhat discrepancies with, again, Ye will have two E's, and then you'll see it having only one E. You'll see the same word spelled one way, and then spelled a different way within the 1611. You will see that. Okay? You will see that. But there again, side by side, they read the same. This is the purification of God's word from the 1611. This, this is by no means obsolete. This is by no means unusable for us today. It is not. It is not. All the capitalizations and corrections of spelling, punctuation, grammar are purified within this. So, and some of these textual critics, uh, wise guys, will, well, which edition of the King James do you use? I use the refined authorized version of the scriptures of 1779 from the 1611 authorized version of the scriptures. They're, they're, they're one and the same, brethren. They're one and the same. Okay? Again, you take your authorized version of the scriptures that you have right now, you get one of these, which I believe everyone should have a copy of, and I have done this myself, thank you. Again, lay them side by side and compare them. And also, too, and I got to mention this. There's a devil out there who, when I told him uh, who I used to fellowship before, I was aware that he was a devil. Okay. Lord took care of that. <laughs> Get away from this guy. I had mentioned to him that I was, um, that I uh, used the 1611 and read from it. And I have sent it to others. And it has the um, Apocrypha in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay. And this devil's, uh, you know, acting all piously. It's like, oh, why are you using that? 
and, you know, being accusatory in his tone. Uh, yes, 1611 did have the Apocrypha. You use the uh, preface to the reader and the epistle dedicatory, the, the Apocrypha is not inspired scripture. Okay? They even address it. All right? All right? So, brethren, which one, right? This is God's word. All right? You can get all the correct, pure doctrines of God, comfort, exhortation, rebuke, instruction in righteousness from reading the 1611. The spelling in there and some of the punctuations and some of the words that are not in there, such as the and uh, the, you know, T-H-E with the little Y might throw you at first, but you get used to it quite quickly. And like I said, this is Roman font. OK, the Gothic font might take a little getting used to, but the Lord could still use this to bring someone onto himself using you, his vessel. OK. This is the purified. Purified. The only thing different from, from this and this is spelling. Okay? Punctuation. Capitalization. Spelling of people's names and places. Okay? These read the same. This is God's word the authorized version of the scriptures. This is perfect. This is perfect. The only thing, like I said, that differs this from this is spelling, capitalization, punctuation, and so on and so forth. Okay? Brethren, brethren, do not get sidetracked into this, yea, hath God said argument that, well, w which one is God's word? Uh, should, we, should we even use this? Should we, w w which one? Oh, there's, er no, 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 no. Yea, hath God said. See, that's a yea, hath God said argument. Okay? Now, granted, I, I, this is what I use for doing this. Amen. And this is what I use for my daily reading of the scripture. Well, with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know, the Spirit of Truth will guide you into all truth. Okay? I occasionally will read out of this. And for this video specifically, I read from this. Okay? Okay? So, this is what is readily available. You do got to search to get the 1611 facsimile copy. Okay, I do believe again that every one of the Church of the Living God ought to have a copy of the 1611, at least for the historical aspect of it. But there again, if this were all you had, God's Word, if this, if this were all you had, this were all you had, what, do you think that would be so insufficient? They hath God said. <laughs> a majority, most people who are King James Scripture believers have the 1779. The one that was in between 1611 and 1779 offhand, I cannot remember, okay? But the, the argument, and a sister brought this up to me, and I had to, had to make this uh, to comment on it. Uh, because she showed me some links about people were talking about this one and this one. Which one is God's word? This is God's word. This is just purified for us with spelling, capitalization. And you have to remember that when this first came out, the printing process and the English language was not as refined as it is today. Okay? Okay. That is what you have to remember. Brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Okay? The authorized version of the scriptures is God's pure, 
perfect, given by inspiration, word of God. Okay? Okay? Again, 1779 is our modern spelling and all the capitalization, punctualizations, and stuff like that is purified in this. You read this, and if you had the Gothic font or even the Roman font with this is, um, you will see those differences. Okay? But this is still God's word. Okay? The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, brethren, is God's pure, perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word. Okay? English was the final purification of seven. It has just been refined onto this, the 1779. Okay? And don't you for one second think or let these Jesuit trained yea hath God said textual critics put into your brains that that this isn't God's word. We just have it refined now today. Okay? Comprende? So that's going to be it for this video. Got two more to do today, Lord willing. And thank you to you, my dearly, dearly beloved sister, for um, bringing this to my attention. I hope this helps you. Okay? Thank you all very much for watching. If you do, love you. And we will see you in the next video, okay? Well, bye-bye. Am I still recording? Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Stop.